Hi, and welcome to the Digital Digging YouTube channel. In this video, we're taking a look at the Supermarine Seafire FR-47, both in history and in the game of War Thunder. The Supermarine Seafire FR-47 was the culmination of the Seafire line, the genesis of which is largely attributable to the well-regarded performance of the navalized Hawker Hurricane. An attempt to replicate that success led to the decision to try the same thing with the Supermarine Spitfire, and in late 1941 an arrestor hook was fitted to a Spitfire 5B. Following trials on HMS Illustrious, during which the narrow track landing gear was the only real concern, not allowing it to thump down on deck like a hurricane, a number of 5Bs were converted during 1942 and redesignated as the Seafire 1B, and 48 new Seafire 1Bs were also built by the Cunliffe Owen Aircraft Company. Perhaps the most obvious feature of the Mark 47 is the contra-rotating prop, which, as the name would suggest, consists of two propellers rotating around a single axis in opposite directions. This is accomplished through some clever gearing and confers a number of advantages on the aircraft. One is that the second propeller picks up and uses the airflow generated by the first propeller, increasing efficiency and reducing the yaw that's sometimes created by the tangential airflow of the single propeller flowing over the vertical stabiliser of the aircraft's empennage. The second prop also cancels out any torque generated by the first and, depending on the design, can increase efficiency by up to 16%. Additionally, having two props doubles the surface area of the blades and again increases the thrust efficiency of the engine driving them. The drawbacks are that it's a complicated design that adds weight to the aircraft and that they produce an alarming amount of noise. The Tupolev Tu-95, the fastest prop aircraft on Earth, is also, thanks to its contra-rotating props, so noisy it's rumoured to show up on submarine sonar. The patent for the contra-rotating prop was granted to Frederick W. Lanchester in 1909. Lanchester, an English polymath, was a fascinating character who designed and constructed an impressive array of machines including a petrol-driven paddle wheel launch in 1904 and a hybrid petrol-electric car in 1927. If that wasn't enough, he published a two-volume work dealing with the problems of powered flight in 1907. This included the first full descriptions of lift and drag and formed the foundation of modern aerofoil theory. He didn't have a similarly gifted head for business, unfortunately, and never made a great deal of money from his inventions. In 2000 AD, Coventry University opened a new building named the Lanchester Library to commemorate the man. The building has a highly unusual appearance caused by the use of light wells and exhaust stacks that draw air through the structure, a touch, I think, of which Lanchester would have approved. The Seafire was far from being the only CRP aircraft, it was tried with other spits and used to good effect on the fairy Gannet. The Westland Wyvern, coming to the game at an unspecified future point, the Avro Shackleton, the Short Sturgeon and later, on one of the most beautiful aircraft that ever flew, the Saunders Road Princess. Anyway, back to the Seafire. Initial performance was good but not outstanding and in 1942 the decision was made to start putting Merlin 32 engines in the Mark IIc and upgrade to a four-bladed prop to give the aircraft a bit of a performance boost. This Mark was redesignated the Seafire L2C. The modification certainly had the desired effect in the words of Eric Winkle Brown, one of the test pilots of the new model. The Seafire L Mark IIc was the most exciting aircraft I had flown to that time. Its initial rate of climb and acceleration were little short of magnificent. My enthusiasm for this new Seafire variant was such that one afternoon, in sheer exhilaration, I looped it around both spans of the fourth bridge in succession. Court martial stuff nowadays, but during the war nobody has the time to bother with such formalities. Shortly after the tests had been performed successfully, all the Mark II C aircraft were converted to Mark L2 Cs. In time, these were replaced with Mark III's, the first true carrier adaption of the Seafire. However, it was generally felt that the L2C was the better of the two aircraft and was found to be able to outmaneuver the A6 M50 in trials. The L Mark III and the FR Mark III were still well regarded, however, and over a thousand were constructed by Westland and Cunliffe Owen. Many of these were part of the British Pacific Fleet. Compared with many of the aircraft of the fleet, the Seafire had a shortish range and light ordnance carrying capabilities, which made it ideal for air combat patrol, a role in which it excelled and was found to be particularly useful countering kamikaze attacks during the Iwo Jima landings, bringing down eight attackers in one day in return for a single loss. There were six main variations of the Seafire altogether, but the naming convention is a little all over the place. We start with the 1B, then we have the 2C, the Mark III, the Mark 15, the Mark 17, 
the Mark 45, the Mark 46 and the Mark 47. The Mark 47 was not only the final version of the Seafire, but the 90 that were built also represented the last Spitfires ever built, with the entire family comprising 22,000 aircraft. It saw action during the Malay Emergency in 1949 and also the Korean War in 1950. The following year, all Seafires were withdrawn from service. There are two Seafires in War Thunder, the Seafire Mark 17 and the Seafire Mark 47, which is the one we'll be concentrating on. It's a Tier 4 aircraft with a battle rating of 6.0, a maximum speed of 464 miles per hour or 746 kilometers per hour and a turn time of 19.2 seconds. It has four 20mm Hispano Mark V cannon with 460 rounds of ammunition and a reload time of 40 seconds. It can also carry up to 1,000 pounds or 453 kilograms in bombs or eight 76mm RP3 rockets. In the game, the Mark 47 sits alongside the Spit Mark 24 and the Tempest Mark IV. In the German tree, it'll be up against the BF 109K4, the G10, the Focke Wolf 190D9, and the TA 152. Learn from history and do not engage these aircraft at height, they will make short work of you. However, if you can tempt them down to your level, you'll be able to outturn them with very little effort. The same goes for the American line, with the exception of the Bearcat 1B, then it's anyone's guess. In the Japanese line, you'll be facing the Ki-84 Otsu, the Ki-84 High, and the N1 K2Js. These should be something of a worry, but the other Japanese fighters at this level, specifically the J2Ms, shouldn't give you too much trouble in terms of maneuverability. Okay, that's it for another video. Like it if you do, don't if you don't. As in, hit dislike if you don't like it. Honestly, I thought this would be very clear by now. This bit on the end is really superfluous. I mean, if you didn't like it, then you really shouldn't be around to hear this bit. Unless, of course, it's this bit that you didn't like. So, one more time. If you liked or disliked the video about the Supermarine Seafire, then please hit like or dislike now. If you did or didn't like this bit at the end about liking or disliking the video, perhaps you could just say so in the comments. If you feel ambivalent about the whole thing, then please petition YouTube to initiate a third option, that of the flat held hand oscillating like an enthusiastically ridden seesaw. Although on reflection, if your ambivalence levels are really that high, then I probably don't have anything to worry about either way. Okay, cheerio chaps, take care of yourselves and those nearest you, and hopefully I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.